So if you're flying with film, it's generally accepted that you have to ask for a hand check at airport security in order to not have your film put through the x-ray machines or the new modern CT machines. Now recently when I went to Japan, I realized I had an opportunity to run a little experiment where I would put different pieces of film into my hand luggage and my checked luggage and get some of them hand checked and some not hand checked and see what the effects of the x-ray and CT machines are on your film. So the story behind this test actually starts back in December of 21, where me and some friends, when we were flying back from Kerry Airport to Dublin, I actually had some film go through a CT scanner because I wasn't aware that airport had CT scanners installed and all my film from that trip got x-rayed. Now the remains of that film is actually stored in this CT scan labeled package. So there's a couple of rolls of 120 in here that went through that scanner. But when I developed all that film from that trip, none of the rolls seem to exhibit any fogging or any issues at all from, you know, going through a CT machine. And then the idea resurfaced over a year later with my trip to Japan last year, where I realized I had a great opportunity to cut up some film and put it in you know, my check-in and my carry-on, and then I'd be able to test the film when I got back from Japan and see what effects x-rays have on different speeds of film going through different parts of the airport security process. So in order to do this test, what I did was I took two rolls of film, one a uh, Roli RPX25 and Roli RPX400. Now you might ask, why did I pick these two films? Well, the first reason is because I wanted to test a slow speed film and a medium speed film, you know, ISO 25 and ISO 400 respectively. And also because these Roli RPX films are just not my favorite and I had no intention to ever shoot these. So I thought they could serve a higher purpose in this little experiment. Then what I proceeded to do in the dark was to split these rolls into three pieces and roll each piece into a disposable film canister and label them. One of them, this one in particular, would go through the normal process with the rest of my film and get hand checked in each airport. The second roll of film would go into my carry-on bag and go through all the x-ray machines from here to Tokyo. So that's Dublin, Frankfurt and Haneda Airport and then back through Frankfurt again. I then took the third roll of film and I put that into my check-in suitcase that was going to go through the check-in process because people say that those get exposed even harder to even more powerful scanning machines. Then once I got home and finally got around to developing the different rolls of film, I decided at the last minute while I was developing it to actually take all the pieces of film and cut them in half. And then I would take half of each piece and put them into a separate developing tank and I developed them pushed two stops. Now the idea here was that if there was any hidden x-ray patterns in the base fog, maybe pushing the film would you know, help you know, rise those up out of the base fog and make them more obvious. And it would also you know, test the fact that if you push your film, will the x-rays affect it more because of the push because you're developing for longer? Will it reveal issues? Will the base fog get worse if there is base fog? So I decided to test that alongside of it. So in the end, I ended up with 12 pieces of film done in four different developing runs. One for RPX 25, 25 plus two, 400 and 400 plus two. And here are the results. So let's go take a look at them. So first up we have the RPX 25 and as you can see there isn't really much difference between all the different versions. So up here we have what went in my carry-on case, uh, normal development, and this is the one that went through the x-rays in Dublin and in Frankfurt once and was hand-checked in Tokyo Haneda Airport. The second strip here went through all the x-rays, so it went through Dublin, Frankfurt and Tokyo. And then the third strip here went through the check-in. And then once again, with the same three situations, except these three were push developed two stops with hand check, carry on without hand check and check-in. Now, if you take a look at these quite closely, we can see that there appears to be on the check-in in my suitcase that went under the plane, there might be a tiny bit of fogging happening here. And we can see it again on the check-in that got developed plus two stops, but it's so slight that the overall base fog isn't really affected. So for this ISO 25 film, 
it really didn't matter that much. I'm sure if I put it through multiple sets of check-in over and over and over again, it would eventually build up enough fog to have a real impact. So for a 25 ISO film, it really didn't make much difference. The real interesting part though, is when we take a look at the 400 ISO. So this is the RPX 400 roll, and as we can see, there are some differences between the different strips. So first off, this is the carry-on with hand check, carry-on without hand check, and check in normal development HD 110 dilution B for six minutes. So we can clearly see that the hand check is, is the clearest, and then slightly darker is the carry-on. Now this is the one that went through the CT machine in Haneda Airport, and it does seem like for a 400 speed film at least, with normal development, you can fog your film very evenly with the CT machine. Now, if you take a look at the check-in, we can see that the fog is quite substantial. So don't put any film in the check-in, to put it quite simply, there's quite a lot of fog. And then if we take a look at the strips that went through the push two stops development, we can see that the carry-on hand check is about the same as the unpushed film. So pushing the film didn't reveal any more base fog. However, you can see here that the extra x-ray in Haneda Airport became a little bit stronger, but not much stronger from push development. So the push development definitely raises the base fog level, which makes sense. The more you develop the film, you know, it'll develop more and more base fog. And then of course the check-in here got cooked even further into push two development and it's much darker with a much thicker base fog. And then just quickly side by side, you can ignore the different colors of the base. That's normal for these two films. This one has a clear base. This one has a not as clear base, but you can clearly see that for the two films, you know, the 25 ISO was definitely affected a lot less than the 400, which makes sense. They both went through the same security checkpoints for the same amount of time in the same bag. So they both get the same amount of exposure. 25 ISO is a lot less sensitive than around 400 ISO. Therefore, it got exposed less. So overall, I would say my recommendations are, if you're bringing film through an airport, try to avoid bringing anything faster than 400 speed film. And um, try and shoot lower speed films on your trips if at all possible. Always ask for a hand check, but don't get belligerent. Just ask politely. In a lot of places they'll help you if, they're, if you're being nice to them. Don't put your film in the check-in, if at all possible. And don't push your film after it comes through an airport because you might reveal more of the x-ray fogging that can happen. So that's really it. So there's a couple of key takeaways from this experiment. Number one, if you're bringing film through an airport, do not push the film in development. Just don't plan to push it at all because it will reveal any base fog that might not have affected your images before. Number two, try to minimize the amount of x-rays that get accumulated onto the film. It's fairly obvious from these that the extra x-ray going through the CT machine in Haneda Airport definitely added a fair bit of base fog. So always ask for a hand check, but be polite about it. Have your film ready in a clear Ziploc bag that you can take out and then you say, you know, and then just be like really polite about it. So just say, you know, Excuse me, I, I'm really sorry about this, but can you please hand check some film for me? I don't want it to go through the x-ray if at all possible. And generally they're fairly okay with doing that. In fact, in Haneda Airport, they offered to hand check my film. So when I was taking the film out of my carry-on bag and they seen the big bag of film, they offered to hand check it for me and went through it all one by one with me. And then, you know, went and sent me on my way, which was just awesome. You know, this training of their staff over there in Japan, like. Come on, that was awesome. I was also able to get a hand check once in Amsterdam Schiphol Airport as well, after they'd installed the new CT machines. The third takeaway is, and this is very obvious from these results, don't put your film in the check-in baggage. It will get absolutely cooked. Uh, the last tip I can give you is, try and shoot lower ISO films when you're traveling. And generally this isn't actually too much of an issue because a lot of the time when you're traveling, you know, you're out during the day, it's nice and sunny, you know, you're traveling in the summertime a lot of the time, maybe, if that's what you're into. And having lower ISO films means that the x-rays will affect them less because they're not quite as sensitive as the higher ISO film. Also, another thing I can recommend is probably overexpose your negative film a little bit. A positive film, this is a bit more of an issue, but if you're shooting negatives, 
You know, overexposure film by two thirds of a stop or even a full stop. And that can help increase the density and the negative quite a bit. And then the base fog density will be a lesser proportion relative to the normal image. And thus the base fog will become less apparent if you overexpose it. It will still be there. You know, if your film gets cooked by a CT machine and there's nothing you can do, it might help you salvage the images in the editing and scanning process. And I suppose the final thing to say is, you know, maybe just don't shoot film when you're traveling. You know, next time I'm traveling, I'm actually planning to shoot mostly digital. I'm gonna bring a Nikon full frame and just shoot that. And maybe I'll bring, you know, a half frame camera to shoot some snapshots on some low ISO, you know, gold 200. And I'll just keep the snapshots and if they get damaged, it'll be annoying, but it won't be too bad. And then I'll um, have all my digital shots, you know, preserved and ready to go. So maybe traveling with film is just not worth the hassle for you. For me, I'm definitely going to probably tone it down a little bit and shoot more film locally. But anyway, I hope you learned something from my little x-raying experiment. I'll see you next time.